Hello, my name is Rajan Arora and welcome to my course Essentials of SQL Server Performance for Every Developer. You are watching the video of module 5 capturing what your application is doing inside SQL Server part 3 running a SQL profiler trace. If you are new to this course, please start it from the course introduction video for better understanding. Thank you. So, we got our SQL Profiler Trace set up in the last segment. And now, all we have to do to run the trace is to click this button here that says Run. Now, in the background, you should know I do have a program running that's generating some synthetic load against my SQL Server instance. So, we will be able to see something when we actually run this trace. So, I will go ahead and click this button. And there we go. We see this window pop up and we can see the events that are being captured by the trace in this window. Now, running the trace interactively like this is fine if you are on a local machine like I am. Or otherwise, maybe a dev server that has a very very light load on it. But you don't want to run a trace interactively like I am doing against a busy server because otherwise you could really cause some performance degradation on that server. There is a way to convert our setup here to run what is called a server side trace that runs just up on the server itself and captures its data to a file. And that's more efficient and I will show you how to do that in just a moment. But for now, know that this interactive mode is something that you only want to be doing locally. Or maybe you do it for just a very brief instance of time on a server to make sure you are capturing the right data. And then you turn it off. That way you can avoid any performance impact. I am going to actually go ahead and stop this trace because I think we have captured enough data to review in the time that I have been talking. And so, to stop the trace, we just hit this stop button here. In the main pane, we see the events that are captured by this trace in the order they occurred. If I click one of these, I will see the text of the command down here in the lower pane with the values that were submitting for this query. I can also see up here in the main grid some of the performance stats about this statement, like CPU reads, writes and duration. So, what I can do is I can scroll through here and I can look for statements that were the most expensive ones and then inspect the SQL for that statement and any parameters that were used in that statement. What is lacking about this user interface is that there is no way to sort or filter the data once it's been taken. So, you can see I can go up here and click on the column header and nothing happens. I am not getting the data to sort here. So, if you want to be able to slice and dice this data, what you are going to do is to save this data to a database table. And then you can query it with just some normal SQL like any other table. So, to do this, you are going to go up here to the file menu and then down to save as and then select trace table. This will prompt you for a database login and what you are going to want is a place and a login that profiler is going to be able to create a table to store this trace data in if that table doesn't already exist. And so what I have done on my machine here is I have created a separate trace database called trace data on my local SQL server instance. And that's where I am going to put this data. So, I will go ahead and log in. And then I am going to find trace data in this list for my databases. I will leave the schema as DBO. And finally, I am going to give this table a name. And now I will click OK. And so, that's going to do is to take this data and create that table and insert all of the data into the table. And so now, if I pop up over to Management Studio, I can go and I can find that database. And I will open the tables. And there is our table. 
and I will just right click so that I can grab the first thousand rows and there those rows are. So obviously I could write SQL queries against this table like any other table and I could filter and sort this data however I wanted to. Now that I have it in a table. We mentioned that you could also run a trace as a server side trace which is more efficient and therefore more appropriate if we are trying to trace access in a server environment rather than on our local machine. So let's see how to do that in the next video. If you like this video, please do share, like and subscribe to my channel for more such videos. Thank you and see you in the next video.